Well, we are in a world right now that is constantly bombarded by external influences, and it's refreshing to meet some individuals that are dedicated to helping us to rediscover like our inner self. And our next guest specializes in helping ambitious women cultivate fulfilling lives aligned with their authentic selves. And here now to share more, we've got life coach Misha Batiste. And uh, Misha, good to have you. Hi, it's good Hi. to meet you. Thanks good to meet you. Today. Thanks for being with us. And uh, as I did say, you know, we do have a lot to look at. You know, you got social media, you have all that stuff. And it can be depressing sometimes. It can really take you down. the. But to really deal with self is what you're focusing on. And how should we really be focusing on self amidst all these external influences? Oh, my God. Yes. You know, we spend so much time on social media. We're bombarded with so many different opinions and comments on how we should all be living our lives. So the first step, I say, is just journal. Talk to yourself. Go inward. See what you think about a certain topic, what you believe your life should look like. And, you know, I own this brand called Become Your Own Muse, and it's really about becoming your own source of inspiration. So, again, looking inward to see what inspires you. What do you love? What are your hobbies? Do you, essentially. <laughs> and when you talk about doing you, I mean, obviously, a lot of people do say, I want to do me. But it becomes hard. I mean, you got life, and life starts lifing, right? And then now you're in a place where you're trying to figure it out. So part of that is really doing that internal work. So when we talk about doing the internal work, what are some of the common mistakes that we're making to prevent us from doing that internal work? I think it's, it's, again, it's the influence of other people. I have a, a lot of clients who are talking to their friends, and it's nothing wrong with talking to outside sources to kind of figure out what you should do. But at the end of the day, trust your gut, trust your intuition. We're, we're often in our head a lot as well. So what I do with my clients is have them slow down and connect to their belly, connect to their heart. What does your heart say? What is your initial gut reaction? And we go from there. I believe that our body has so much intelligence that we haven't even scratched the surface of with yet. So it's about going into your body, breathing into your body, and seeing what's, what it's telling you, what it wants to do. We talk about self-exploration, and that's really huge, right? I think as you're talking about a new year, we're here in the, in the face of a new year, and a lot of people want new. How do I yeah. go about that self-exploration? How do you go about that self-exploration? It's just trying new things, right? I think there's a lot of things that probably swirl in our heads of like, oh, I would love to try that. And like for me, I've been wanting to do horseback riding. So I've this past fall, I started training with horseback riding and just seeing if I like it. Like, I think that's the other thing is just experimenting, right? Um, trying it out. If you don't love it, give it up and try something new. I think we often um, say like, oh, I'm going to do this thing. And so I, since I said I, I'm doing it, I just got to keep pushing for it. Be okay with letting things go and seeing what next is out there. When you release things, you're able to like welcome in newness. So experiment is really the key word here. Are we seeing any trends amongst the clients that you're seeing when it comes to being a life coach? I mean, are we seeing some things that are flowing multiply between people? I think it's it's this idea of, of um, limiting beliefs, right? Like, oh, I'm not smart enough, or I haven't done this yet, or I have a couple of clients who want to be writers, and they're like, well, I'm not a good writer yet. And so it's important. There's this idea um, called growth mindset. So allowing yourself to be a beginner and then letting yourself become better as you go, right? Like just trying it and Keep trying until you get better, allowing yourself that space to grow in that way. So it's, you know, those limiting beliefs. Let, I try to get my clients to transcend those limiting beliefs. And so they can just really kind of open up this runway of trying out things, seeing what it works, and believing that you can get better at each thing you try out. Talk to me a little bit about transition, because I think that's a big challenge for a lot of people. They need some coaching through transition. You yourself have been able to make a transition. You went from a political strategist now to a life coach. Um, first of all, yeah. explain a little bit about your transition and then what people need to know in order to make that pivot. Yeah, I had a decades career in national politics, um, working for a couple of presidential campaigns, Senate races, and by 2020, you know, with working in campaigns, I was like moving every six months and just <laughs> barely was able to like maintain an apartment because I had to move somewhere else all the time. So by 2020, I was burnt out. I 
also lost all of my ambition in that career. I had nothing else I wanted to do. I'm so proud of the career, but I had nothing else to do. So I was in therapy and I'm like, I'm so depressed. I don't know what to do. And my therapist asked me this simple question is, what is something you do every day and you just do it naturally? And it's encouraging my friends. It's even like meeting strangers and asking like, what do you want to do? And then I'm just like encouraging them like, why don't you try this? And why don't you try that? So we landed on life coaching and I had some limiting beliefs around life coaching. I, I thought like, what if people think I'm like scammy or, you know, I just didn't want to be judged for being a life coach, but I had therapy. I saw my own coaches. I tried uh, hypnotherapy to just really get myself to a place where I'm comfortable with this transition. And then I just started talking to people about it. I just made it, I kind of like, I'm becoming a life coach. Before I even like started my certification program, I'm just like, I'm becoming a life coach and I'm just speaking it into existence. Um, and so I always believe that like you tell people what you want to do and they kind of help you make it happen, honestly. It's just how the universe works. You know, you talked a little bit about hitting the ceiling and I think that's a problem for so many people. They hit the ceiling and feel as though there's nowhere to go, nothing to do. Talk to somebody about what they should do if they feel like they hit the ceiling. Why go through another year of doing it this kind of way when you know you're already at the ceiling? Let me tell you, God will kick you out of whatever <laughs> career he's not letting, like you're refusing to leave because at this top of 2020, I was like, I'm done with campaigns. I need a break. And then I joined like two other campaigns after that. And then I joined, I got like another political job and it just, I, my body was so frustrated with me sticking in this career. And so God was just kind of pushing me out, you know? So when those things happen, you really got to take a moment to sit and just be like, you're done here. What is next? And you, again, your body and your mind will tell you what is next. You just got to have the courage and the faith in yourself and the faith in God to push forward and make it happen. And maybe the support of a life coach too, to help you with that transition. Cause it's all about the mindset. And I think mindset is critical, right? Because when you talk about making any transition, it first starts with, uh, you know, the heart and then the mind. The mind has to say, listen, I'm ready to do that. But there's so many things that seem to clutter the mind. Is there anything that we could be doing to kind of like free it up so that we can make the right decisions? Yeah, I always tell my clients to be on your side right? Like be on your side because those things that cloud your mind, again, is usually other people, right? Outside um, voices, worrying about judgment. I often hear my clients feel like, well, if I change, is that really authentic of me? Like, will people think that I'm not being authentic because I'm making this change? And it's like, it's all about you. You have to be on your side. So it's pushing yourself, believing in yourself, encouraging yourself, being your own cheerleader. I call it self-coaching in a way. So, you know, I work with my clients for six months, but as we're nearing our end, I kind of train them to self-coach themselves to, you know, any type of blocks coming in the way in, in, um, in the future, they can get that mindset straight again and move forward. What advice do you give to somebody about having a life coach and embracing a life coach in their journey? Because... A lot of people feel like they can do it by themselves, but the truth is, no, you need some help. Well, the first thing I will say is invest in yourself. I think so many women and men aren't ready to make that investment in a life coach. You're like, oh, I've never done it before. I don't know. Just invest in yourself. When you hire a life coach, you are investing in yourself and you deserve that investment. Secondly, the thing that my clients say the most in the beginning of working with me is that, like, it's just nice to have someone to process these thoughts and feelings with, right? Like, we can talk to our friends, we can talk to our moms, but they don't have the skills to really help you get to the end goal or conclusion, right? They're just like, oh, okay, well, good luck. But I'm here to really stand in the gap for you, to really work with you to get your mind and help you make these healthy decisions and help you reach your goals and be that accountability partner. So that's what you're buying into. You are buying into someone who is invested in your success just as much as you are. You know, we talked a little bit about you being a political strategist before you came on. Uh, and I want to ask you about that because in the political world, a lot goes on and it can be kind of weighty, right? Um, are you finding more and more people in the political world, given the fact of how heightened politics are and how divisive it's been, are really trying to make that transition because they recognize and realize, like, there's, you know, it's a lot of stress here. 
Yeah, and I, I think so when I when I got into politics, I, I really wanted to be a public servant and and work with candidates who I believed can help change the, this country, you know, help other people's lives. But the truth of the matter is, once this person gets elected in office, the people who worked on that campaign have no control over what the outcome is. And so I think that's the thing that gets, you know, really heady. Like, we believe it, we are fighting for it, and then when they get in office, it's it's out of our hands. We, we have no more control. So I, I think that, it, you know, especially after, like, the last a decade we've had, it, it just is stressful to support candidates and work with candidates and just not knowing how things will end up in the end. Yeah. Misha, it's been great talking to you. And certainly, uh, as people are looking for a life coach, we're going to give the people the information so they can reach out to you. But thank you for spending time with us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. All right. Take care. Take care. Now, listen, if you want more information, please visit her website at MishaBatiste.com and then follow her on Instagram at Misha A. Batiste. We encourage you. Don't go anywhere. We got more open coming up right after this.